Coming up on this edition of Gostown This Week, Brad Parker sits down with a local bank to talk about some tips to avoid identity theft in our Senior Scout segment. We'll get the what's what from the high school on their weekly podcast video, and spring sports are in full swing. We'll get you the scores and upcoming schedule. It's all ahead on Gostown This Week. Hi, good afternoon. Welcome to today's segment of Seniors Count on Gostown This Week. My name is Brad Parkhurst and this week we'll be talking identity theft with Jim Nogla from uh, Citizens Bank. Uh, Jim, welcome. Thank you. Uh, as we know, the identity theft is very rampant, I guess, in the country today or throughout the world. About 38 million Americans are affected by it every year. Wow. That's a large number. It's crazy. And our senior population is the hardest hit population. And they more they find them more vulnerable? Much more vulnerable. Um, they have a lot of scare tactics they use on them. And so it's it's easier for them to prey on that age group. I know I'm one who, I'm very cautious about everything that I do, but I know others that are not. Uh, now, Citizens does this as a form of uh, reaching out to the people at an educational seminar. We do it as an educational seminar for companies, for uh, civic organizations, for senior senators, a lot of uh, nursing homes and assisted living homes we do it for, which has been really beneficial to the senior population. Oh, that's great. So you actually go out to these locations to present these? We go out, we do a live presentation, we have a PowerPoint presentation, we give everybody a color copy of the the presentation that we're doing so they have something to take home and we direct the people to different types of government websites and agencies to help them resolve their identity theft crisis or we could ask them to go into the branch and work with the branches to get some help there too. Okay, I see you haven't left, uh, could you explain that there's a variety of identity thefts that people, uh, could you expand on a little of these or a couple of these? Yeah, I'll tell you, the one that's the scariest, especially our senior citizen population is friendly fraud. Friendly fraud is a fraud that is caused by a younger child or a younger relative taking money from one of their senior grandparents or even a parent and falsifying checks, making them out to cash, learning how to sign the name. They go to the bank and they cash the check and we can't recognize the signature being wrong because it matches. Okay. So what happens is if the people want to file a police report, then they have to sign an affidavit and the police will prosecute the relative. If they prosecute, the relative will go to jail. So therefore, about 90% of friendly fraud cases don't get filed. And that's really too bad. It's to, to see the younger people taking advantage of their yeah. own family members. Uh, is there a way, I'm just thinking right now, for, say, you mentioned sometimes it's a grandchild, but for the, cho- uh, the children of the, uh, the grandparent to kind of monitor, to keep an eye on, if they get, see that their parent is not... I would suggest that as your parents get older and as our our seniors are aging in population that they have someone that can help guide them through their checking accounts and make sure maybe they're even on the checking account to protect the parent because there are things that happen every day. The parent might be called for some reason and ask that they have to get their grandson or grandchild out of jail and the, the voice sounds just like the grandson or grandchild so they will go and take money out of the bank and they'll go buy gift cards. When they buy the gift cards, they then take the gift cards and send them to the person that called them. Once they do that, there's no tracing the money. So we're training our bankers to ask why they're taking large sums out, okay. especially for our senior population. And I know the stores are actually training the clerks to do the same thing. Why are you buying $4,000 worth of gift cards? And another thing I know that I've read about that, uh, not just credit cards, but, uh, if these phone calls that people get, asking for social security, or asking for personal information, and they get tricked into revealing these things. Uh, they do. And you know, it's funny because I use the term when I'm doing the seminar, it's like in, in the use of drugs, just say no. Well, when someone calls you and you don't know who they are and you don't recognize it, or you're uncomfortable with it, just say no and hang up. Call your son or daughter and ask them if there's a problem with their children prior to sending any kind of money to that person or ever giving your social security number over the phone or an account number over the phone. I know there's another one too where people call and say that uh, you owe the IRS money. 
<laughs> the IRS will never call you for money. You have to have a uh, letter sent to you or a registered letter sent to you that you'd have to sign for if you owe them a large sum of money. After you've met with them, there are terms and conditions where they could actually have you do electronic versions or phone calls, but it needs to be signed off and approved by both parties. And I wonder some of the ways that uh, these uh, thieves, scammers, whatever you want to call them, get their money or get their information from you. Uh, and there's some terms that I know that are used uh, that I'm not sure that some senior citizens are aware of. Uh, as I look at this list here, we got dumpster diving. Dumpster diving. Everybody thinks it's dump diving into the dumpster in the back of the grocery store or the restaurant. It's actually diving through the trash that you're throwing out. If we're ripping our trash up, it's easier to tape it back together and have it reproduced. It should be shredded today or it should be burned. I would never put it in the trash in whole if you get credit card offers or you have medical bills. Um, everything that comes through with medical bills has medical information on it. People can take your identity that way. So you want to shred those before putting them in the trash. And you mentioned shredding. Uh, can they bring them to certain locations at the bank for shredding or is that not something that the bank offers? The bank will shred, but we'll only shred bank documents okay. and doc, uh, bank records. I know there's big oh, companies who go around shredding. Pick up and shred. uh, is there any place where the you know a person like myself could bring it to, or can you actually buy a shredder? You're actually better off buying your own shredder at, at the local um, office supply store, and I would suggest looking at one that's strong enough to shred plastic cards and to shred all your documentation. If you travel and you do any kind of cruises and you use your room key, that's how you buy everything on the cruise ship. When you go to the hotel and you check in, that's how you're checking into the hotel room. It has a magnetic strip in the back. Unfortunately, these companies put all our information on that magnetic strip. So if you don't destroy that card, your information, the credit card, phone number, home address is all on the back of that card. I've also heard uh, when people go on vacations, they use credit cards or you can use cash too, but you're better off to use a credit card rather than a debit card. Always. Even when you're buying gas, to give you a simple example, if you're buying gas at the pump in the state of New Hampshire, we now have a red rectangular sticker that says secure and it's over the gas pump. That means that they've tested it and make sure there's no siphoning device underneath to steal your credit card information. Other than that, you should always use your credit card as a Visa or MasterCard if it's a debit and go right inside and pay the clerk. Never use your PIN number outside of your own bank. Another reason I heard about that is because if they do steal your information on the debit card, they can actually empty your whole bank account without any. And I know a lot of banks, and I know citizens does, because uh, it happened to me, uh, where they saw that my card was used yes. someplace that I had never been. And they didn't pay it, and they fixed it, which I, I'm sure other banks do up to the same thing. Most all the major banks today are monitoring your accounts, making sure that your ATM debit card is safe. If they see any odd kind of transactions, they're going to notify you or they're going to shut the card off and then notify you there's a problem. Um, and you can get your money back today. It takes about 10 days to get your money back. And you file it with the bank. And as soon as you see a funny charge in your account, you should report it immediately. There are machines out there that can skim our credit cards anywhere. One of the other things that people don't realize too is stealing material items. Our senior population tend to have a nice pocketbook they put inside the carriage and they're shopping. What I can say to you is please tie the strap or secure it with a seatbelt from the shopping cart and make sure it's zip closed. Because if you turn around, it takes two seconds for someone to grab the bag. If it's tied to the cart, it's harder to pull it away. Just makes it a little safer for you. Just makes me think of something I learned a long time ago. Uh, I don't carry my wallet in my back pocket. I carry it in my front pocket. Somebody told me that and it made a lot of sense. Uh, now, should people develop some sort of plan if they feel that they've been uh, scammed or they've been, anything has been, their identity has been hacked. Maybe that's not the right word. Stolen. <laughs> uh, hacked or stolen, and no matter how you look at it, it's a bad situation. But it should be reported to the police department as soon as possible. It should be reported to your bank first. Go to the bank, report that there's been an issue with your account. They will replace your debit card. Nine out of ten times, it's not your actual bank account, but it's your debit card that was what I call infiltrated by somebody that shouldn't have it. 
So they'll replace that and you should be secure again. If it's a large sum of money over $100, you should report it to the police department that it was stolen. I see another thing, people are, I suppose we talked about dumpster diving, but uh, I would imagine uh, if you're a male, yeah. people can get access to your mail, especially in a, uh, well, sometimes in even assisted living facilities and stuff. A lot of our assisted living facilities, which I think are beautiful, they're set up so nicely right now, but they have locked mailboxes. Okay. They have a locked outbox and a locked inbox, which makes it secure. You got to remember when you were younger, if you lived in that rural neighborhood and you had the box at the end of the driveway, we went and put our bills out there, oh, put yeah. our checks in them and our bills and our account numbers. And the first thing we did was put a red flag up. Well, that red flag is up and that tells every crook driving by, I have money in me or information so they can shop in your neighborhood. So they tell you, you should bring your mail directly to the post office. Okay. Uh, a lot of our senior citizens nowadays are, uh, computer savvy and somewhat. Uh, I mean, I see there's had some hits about uh, the uh, passwords, uh, people should protect their passwords uh, or create hard to hack passwords. Again, I keep using the word hack and change the passwords periodically. I know I have a, a lot of hack myself. Uh, well, I guess I'm, it's also a good idea for people to keep track of their money or Look at your statement, I guess is what I'm saying. Your statement should be reviewed. If you're getting paper statements, please review the statement every month thoroughly. Make sure there are no odd charges. If you are online and banking online, you should be checking your account at least once a day, maybe once every couple days, depending on how much activity you have in the account. Just be aware of what's going on. Look for small odd amounts charged. That's going to give you a clue there's something wrong. Uh, that's what I was talking about. And people can check their credit. Uh, I don't know if many senior citizens do, but I guess you, you, uh, we have an 800 number here. I'm not sure, but I think we can probably put that up on the screen afterwards that they can call. Or they can go, I guess, what are the three major credit agencies? You should check your credit at Equifax, TransUnion, or Experian. And uh, we could put a slide up for that because it does have them. And you can check them online. Or you can call the 800 numbers. It is re recommended to do it once a year, even if you're not dealing with credit issues. You should be checking your account in case somebody got a hold of your information. Remember that one thing that we carry as seniors are our Medicare, Medicaid cards. And the one thing that's on there are our full social security numbers. That's something that we need to keep secure and tight and keep to yourself. Only use it when you go into the doctors. If you don't need it in your pocketbook, lock it up in your lockbox back at your apartment or your condo or your house. Uh, I guess one of the things that you've noticed after reporting to police, you like have to uh, freeze your accounts or all your accounts. You you have the opportunity of freezing your uh, credit accounts if you have any kind of infiltration. If you are affected by identity theft on your bank account, you should actually file it with the ftc.gov. There's another slide we could probably put up for that so you could see it. And that's one of the things that we offer when we do the seminars is that all of this information goes home with you so you have it in writing. Uh, I know there's a lot more questions that we do here, um, but I like what you presented so far for the uh, listening audience, especially the senior citizens, to be aware, and I guess the point I want to make out there to everybody, and I thank you for talking to us, is that if you suspect anything, report it right away. If you report it, should we go to the police or is it to your banking agency? You probably should go to the police first. I would go to the bank first and report the issue and have them investigate it and then report it with the police. That would be your best route. Okay. All right, well, Jim. I'd like to thank you very much for presenting us with all this Thank you for having me. Well, it was my pleasure. All right, and uh, if people would like to get some information, is there a way that they can contact you or the bank? or They could contact me at james.naugler -E at citizensbank.com. That's the best way to get a hold of me. Okay, that's great. That's good information. So if you have any questions, Jim would be glad to answer to you. And again, I thank you for listening to us today on Seniors Count segment of uh, Goffstown this week. Thank you and have a wonderful day. Thank you. Here's three things from this week's meetings that you need to know. 
During the school board meeting Monday night, members discussed a request by the new Boston School Board to hold school on Martin Luther King Day during the next school year. Both towns belong to SAU 19. The superintendent said that if school is held on MLK Day, he expects that students learning that day would focus on Dr. King. Members want to hear from the public and will discuss the request at their next meeting. Members voted to increase the pay for substitute teachers by $5 for longer school days this year. The longer days are to help make up for these snow days. This would be a total increase of approximately $2,700 in pay with the money to come from the budget line for substitutes. Pay was increased in 2014 and 2015 for the same reason. And during the Sewer Commission meeting Tuesday night, members voted to have a consultant, Hoyle Tanner and Associates in Manchester, conduct a sewer rate study for the commission. The study is expected to be completed in less than six months. The last rate study was done in 2009. And that's three things from this week's meetings that you need to know. You can catch the full meetings on Channel 22 or on our on-demand page. Good morning, Grizzlies. I'm your host, Stephen Hanneberg. It's good to be back. I'm joined by Sam Martel, Sal, and Leah Fogarty. Hi. And at the end of the podcast, she's going to talk to us about the uh, Day of Silence, which is going to be the day the podcast airs, so today. Uh, first, we have a few athletic announcements. There were several wins this week. We had a, a girls lacrosse win, a, a boys baseball, boys lacrosse, and a girls softball. And um, on that note, we have a, uh, a new piece of attire for sale. Um, the uh, <coughs> Grizzly Nation t-shirt. Uh, there's some text on the back too. I don't know how well you can see it or read it, but um, this shirt is for $10 for sale and it's uh, for sale in the main office. Now the neat thing about this shirt is when you buy one, you can actually get into sports games here for free, unless it's a playoff game. And uh, most spring games are free anyways, but come the fall, this will definitely come in handy. And um, that's all we have for athletic announcements. And uh, now we're going to pull up the leader. Before we move on to that, I think this guy brings in new articles of clothing every week he's on the podcast. You're like a model, basically. And, and I'm, I cannot wait to see what you bring in for the summer. Is it going to be sunglasses? Are we going to see some bathing suits? Like, Steven, what is it going to be? We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. I'll let you know. All right. I'm excited. I don't know about you. Uh, so speaking about summer and speaking about warm weather in general, today is Earth Day. If you have a free prep of some kind and you'd like to walk down to the school courtyard with the, all the gardens in it, uh, the earth science teachers like Mr. V and Dr. Hoden are encouraging that. Uh, they, we have props. Uh, they want people to come down to do things like uh, helping plant vegetables, spreading bark, uh, cleaning up the garden of any trash that might be in it. 
And honestly, I think even if you're not someone that's big in the gardening, it's just gonna, if it's a beautiful day outside yeah. and you have a free prep, why not go out and help out anyway? Yeah. I know I would. Even if you Get don't a have a free prep. Sun tan? Get burnt like me. <laughs> I don't think I've ever managed to get a tan in my life, but definitely I'm going to try. Definitely going to try this Friday. Uh, Noises Off was last Thursday and Friday, and the turnout was amazing, and the support we got from people coming in was amazing, so I want to thank you for that. that was, I know you uh, did. Some of our seniors' uh, last show here, so uh, congratulations to those seniors. Um, prom tickets are on sale during lunches for $60 per ticket. Uh, you can um, purchase one there. And uh, the deadline is going to be Friday, but uh, there's a little rumor going around that uh, it might be extended, so there's that chance, but still, get them while you can, so. I um, don't know if I've heard that rumor, but definitely try and buy your tickets before Friday. I hear they're not going to accept it from birds. They will not accept cash donations from birds for tickets. All right. I don't get that at all. (laughs) (laughs) You had to see the podcast last week. Okay, so the reason you're here is to talk about... Day of Silence. So, Day of Silence is... Kids from schools nationwide participate in it, and basically we take a pledge at the beginning of the day just not to talk. And it's to bring awareness to LGBT bullying and kids that are bullied, and basically silence just because of who they are. And... And I'm sure, so this is something that GSA is involved in? Yeah, yeah. Um, we're having a meeting after school from 3 to 4 to just talk about the events of Day of Silence and, like, what happened and, like, our experience and, like, what we felt and, like, people said and stuff. Let me ask you, uh, so you're a member of GSA? Yeah, yeah. Why is this day so important to you? Well, being LGBT, um, I feel like it's really important to just bring awareness to like, I don't know, like, I haven't experienced bullying firsthand or seen it a lot here, but I know that it's like really bad in some other places and like other schools aren't as supportive and don't have like Mr. Webb, he's really supportive and all the teachers and guidance counselors for the most part are like really nice and like, I don't know, people are actually like losing their lives because of like who they are and like Kids, I see kids all the time use like slurs and stuff, and I know words don't have power unless you give it to them, but it's really disrespectful and like, it should be taken more seriously, and I feel like the uh, the silence illustrates it really well, people have been silenced. I think it's really amazing that you're coming on, especially yeah. in front of the camera. I don't know how you feel, but you, honestly, you're doing a great job, and thank you so much for being on with yeah. us. Yeah, thank you. Uh, and I, and really, I think that's uh, all yes. we have for this week. Um, and uh, it's been fun, Grizzlies. I'm Stephen Hanneberg. I'm still Sam Martel. I'm not actually a And this has been your weekly update. We're out.